Hi, I'm Juan from Draufsicht and if you saw my last video you were probably wondering what's this guy ranting all about? Well, what I want to say is that depending on fossil fuels is a kick in the balls to ourselves as humanity and to our peace. And it's also a kick in the balls for investors. <coughs> Believing in fossil fuels is so 20th century. Oh my god, it's like dial-up telephones. Right now, any economic investments in petroleum only obtain profit at the expense of high social costs and these high social costs will become economic costs for the generations to come. Let's take my country as an example. Mexico is an oil producing country which has depended for decades on oil to fund its public system. This means that a great deal of money for all public services has been coming from petroleum. This is because we have important oil reserves, but there is a problem. Less and less oil can be extracted from common oil whales. Oil. Oil. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is that they are... Fishing on dry land? What kind of a fish story is this? Many of the oil wells that are being targeted are in unconventional oil reservoirs, which means that they are not the usual big pools of oil from the Gulf of Mexico. But they are nerve-like reservoirs inside the earth, which needs a lot of chemical to drill effectively. All these chemicals filter through the soil until they at some point reach water. So why not? Let's drill them up! Sounds easy, right? Now, let's take a look at this map. Fracking in these lands basically means compromising the water security of a whole region, which is also one of the biggest sweet water deposits in the country. All these water supplies will become contaminated and people will be displaced, causing more violence and forced migration. And the Congress of Mexico is already working in big steps towards assuring that local communities lose power over their natural resources. They are changing laws to privatize water bodies which were of common property since the 1910s. In parallel, a new law of national security is giving the army the faculty to decide which things it sees as national threats. It can be drug dealers, of course, but it can also be environmentalists and political movements and communities opposed to fracking. To understand what's happening with fracking around the world right now, we have to see that the US and some oil producers in the US are actually considering fracking as a salvation in this price war that has been going on against OPEC since the 1970s. With only about 4.4% of the world's population, the US consumes about 20% of the total oil produce. Even with fracking, about 60% of the oil consumed by the US is still of foreign origin. Recently, there was an important energy reform in Mexico, designed almost entirely by US oil company interests. In the US, if your land has shale oil and gas, you make a deal with the fracking companies and you receive a percentage of the revenue. But this doesn't work the same way in third world countries. Outside of the US, they work a little bit different. They try to buy land. And if you don't want to sell it, well, you want to sell it, right? This is what colonialist countries have done all the time. They outsource environmentally questionable projects to countries where legal systems are not as strong as theirs. When an environmentalist in the US is murdered, it might be a big scandal. But well, in those shithole countries, who will notice? But hey, terrorizing populations all around the world for satisfying your material needs has always been very successful. Okay. Yeah. To sum up, 
Fracking is extracting petroleum and gas from extremely low capacity reserves in the earth. So you have to make lots of them by injecting a cocktail of substances at high pressures to release small amounts of oil and gas and leave poison slowly filter through the earth to the water bodies. It constitutes a rapist relationship with environments. Fracking might delay the moment when oil is running out, but the social costs are violence, refugees and environmental degradation. It is very narrow-minded to delay the transition to renewable energies. And we not only depend on oil for energy, we depend on oil for things very important such as healthcare. But what can you do as an individual? Inform yourself, be critical and demand from your politicians that they work towards the transition to renewable energies.